the ocean. It covers 71% of the Earth's surface. Nearly half of the Earth's species depend on it to support life. Our oceans sustain us economically, physically, and socially, providing food, jobs, energy, recreation, transportation, and more. According to the United Nations, over 3 billion people depend on marine and coastal biodiversity for their livelihoods. 44% of the world's population live within 150 kilometers of the coast. In the United States, more than half the population already lives in coastal areas. Not only is the rate of population growth in coastal areas accelerating, but increasing coastal tourism and other new industries upon which our society depends puts additional pressure on the coastal and marine environment. How can the United States and countries around the globe better understand the ocean and how to protect the ecology of the ocean? while at the same time preparing for the effects of global climate change. You start by planning. The coastal land area is the primary habitat of our species, of people. So that along the little ribbon of land, along the oceans, on 5% of the inhabited land space, half of the world's people live. So what's happening to the coast, including the wet part of it, is hugely important. So looking at the ocean and saying, okay, we've got a lot of things going on, a lot of people that want to use the ocean, how do we make it so that that use is sustainable into the future? And we're finding that a lot of that has to include conservation at its core. A lot of Canada's marine planning is focused on conservation um, and protection. We understand um, very much that in order to have a vibrant uh, marine economy, you have to have it built on a sound ecological framework. So marine planning is just that, all about planning for the future and making sure you have compatible uses and getting it right, making it certain, making it financially uh, more attractive to industry, while at the same time safeguarding our important environmental ecosystems. You have to access all forms of knowledge, not just science knowledge about ecosystems dominating the issues for decision makers. They want to know about people and about how people use these environments and what's the future of human uses of coastal areas and ocean areas. And that means very sophisticated, sensitive, participatory processes with the communities that use the ocean. It, it's quite interesting in the Azores because uh, some of the most efficient marine protected areas were created by the people. Uh, it's because they feel it's an opportunity to increase tourism and it's uh, also an opportunity for um, the, the, the cultural heritage to be protected. Tourists come to Hawaii to see the ocean, to play in the ocean. We also depend on our ocean for uh, fish. Without good planning, uh, the ocean will not be like how I experienced it growing up. And in fact, it's not how my parents experienced it growing up. Within the last generations, the ocean has changed a lot. As climate change expresses itself and things happen like rising sea level, uh, more intense storms, more and more people crowding into that little ribbon of land. So there's more and more pressure on fishing, um, looking for oil and fossil fuels. Um, all of these issues are getting more intense. Ocean acidification, for example, uh, as, a, as, a, as a result of our changing climate, that's probably the, one of the largest concerns I have. It's affecting corals, it's affecting uh, fish, it's affecting marine mammals, and it's something that we won't be able to really turn the clock back on. So you don't just plan for the state of the ocean today. You take into account the fact that the ocean's going to change for its own reasons, and activities have to be sustainable in the face of all, the, all that natural variability. One of our policies is to take a precautionary approach, uh, and we have experience with oil spills and other uh, navigational uh, mishaps 
that um, tell us this is the way to go. And uh, we're going to, of course, make sure that when those things happen, we're able to deal with it in a responsible way and uh, protect our environment, protect the other users. For us in the Azores, the precautionary approach is quite important because we know that without the environment, we wouldn't survive. The citizens in the Azores, they demand from their government to have always a precautionary approach towards the environment. Th that doesn't mean that the environment is not used, but it has to be used in a sustainable way, and whenever there is a doubt, the environment wins. We've spent a lot of time identifying those ecological and biological values um, that essentially support our ocean's economy. We've also spent a lot of time identifying ecologically significant species and critical habitats. If an activity like offshore oil and gas or transportation or marine renewables wants to set up shop within a certain location, here is the ecological information that they need to take into account to try to do so in a sustainable fashion. Managing uses on the coastal and ocean areas has become more important as the population has grown. Uh, right now the population in Hawaii is about 1.3 million uh, and growing. So uh, managing those resources are very important so that we can have a sustainable use of those resources, preserve it for our future generations. The need for policies and for looking at the whole and not just saying let's manage fish or let's just worry about the pollution, or let's just think about wind farms. To put all those pieces together and come up with a coherent policy is, is really critical. Collecting science-based data about our ocean and coastal ecosystems, as well as the human uses, and bringing that together for everybody to make decisions from is really what excites me about marine planning. It's all open, it's all available. The more information people have in their hands, the better decisions that will be made and the more efficient uh, those decisions will be.